Hey guys, Victor here coming at you again with another discussion video and today's focus is going to be on how to beat Unchained which ever since the release of Duelist Nexus has pretty much been the I guess MVP of the format because it's just been non-stop growing in hype and popularity as it continues to take more and more top spots at YCS's and various other events. So with that out of the way, let's just jump straight into the video. Now before we talk about the actual weaknesses of the deck, let's talk about the end board that this deck typically tends to make. Because compared to most decks from the previous formats, the end board for Unchained is honestly just kind of underwhelming. Or not underwhelming, but it isn't as oppressive to deal with. Because let's start with DDD Wave, High King Caesar. So this card's okay, basically it just negates anything that would special summon a monster. And, you know, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's not a nominee negate, but sometimes just being able to stop key cards like Nibiru and things of that nature can just win the game. Just because uh, there is like a lot of interaction with this deck, which is something that you don't really see when a deck is top tier. Because they typically want to oppress the opponent as much as possible and prevent them from playing as much as possible. And then speaking of that, we have Unchained Soul of Rage. This card literally targets one card on the field and then it links with it. Well, one card on the opponent's side of the field and links with it. So, you know, it's going to be pretty much one for one removal every time. But even that has, like, glaring weaknesses because if people are still playing cards such as, like, Book of Moon or Forbidden Droplet, for example, they can just send the card that this card targets and then this card does nothing, basically, for the rest of the turn. And then to combine with that, they typically have one or two traps set. They either have Abominable Chamber of the Unchained or they're going to have Escape of the Unchained, which is just one for one removal again. But it does destroy their own monsters, so that means that their effects are going to trigger and float into other cards. Because the one thing that this deck does better than anyone else is that it's honestly just irritating getting rid of the Unchained cards. Because the moment they're destroyed, they just float into more cards, and then those cards get them even more advantage, and yada yada yada. But that's only when they actually get destroyed, which is one of like the glaring weaknesses that this deck actually has. But we're going to save that for a different part. But... As I said, the end board for this, while it's not super oppressive, it is still good enough for it to be able to actually, you know, win YCSs and top countless other events. So, with that out of the way, now we can focus on what actually stops the deck. Now, even though this deck does tend to do a lot, it honestly does have some pretty glaring weaknesses that can be easily exploited. And one of those comes in the form of its main monster, Unchained Soul Lord of Yama, which, you know, is its main combo starter. But it's incredibly weak to cards such as like Effect Veil or Infinite Impermanence. You know, just any type of negate you typically want to use on this just because if you're able to Imperm or Veiler this, they've typically committed a bunch of resources and they're you're desperately in need of the card that they're actually going to be able to search. So a lot of the times, much like with other decks that rely on the Link two or something to get their play started their turn can just end and then their board is just mediocre because it's just unchained soul lord of yama plus um like one or two sets usually the abominable unchained card or <clears throat> escape of the unchained so yeah if you have anything like this pretty much always just use it on lord of yama but you can also just make justifications for keeping a things such as infinite, imper infinite impermanence or effect veiler if you have like uh, a combination of nibiru the primal being for example right if you're, even if your opponent ends on the DDD, which they will, uh, you just save it with your Nibiru and then you just clear the whole board and you just pretty much instant win the game. So this deck is really weak to cards such as like Baylor and Imperm just because it helps crack everything. So keep that in mind while playing against it. And now let's move on to Glory and Weakness number two. Now, as stated previously, this deck pretty much has like no Omni Negates besides the DDD Wave King Caesar, but even then that only stops monster effects. So it's really weak to these types of cards. But first, let's talk about Triple Tactics Talent. And by Triple Tactics Talent, I just mean cards that pretty much steal monsters. So whether it's Triple Tactics Talent, Marionette Might, Change of Heart, Mind Control, whatever, they're all really solid options of just being able to break this board instantly because you just typically you can just target like their DDD Wave King Caesar, right? And then by taking their Caesar, you pretty much shut off your their Unchained Soul of Rage and you force them to have to be able to use their traps in order to actually out the card. And uh, it just gets out of hand really quickly, especially like in the mirror match, for example. But even without like the mirror match, just being able to take these key cards and force your opponent into unfavorable positions is just honestly invaluable. And then let's talk about cards such as Radiant the Multidimensional Kaiju. It doesn't have to be specifically Radiant. In fact, I think cards such as Lava Golem are infinitely better because this deck is always guaranteed to end with two monsters on the field. Now, whether it's the Unchained Soul plus the Wave King Caesar or it's the Nightmare Griffin end board, they're both extremely weak to cards such as like Lava Golem. But if you really care about your normal summon, then Radiant the Multidimensional Kaiju is definitely the way to go because you just tribute over things such as Un Unchained Soul of Rage. And since it wasn't destroyed, it won't trigger. And then, you know, if these cards don't trigger, they're basically worthless. And a lot of the times it's just more than enough to win the game. So, yeah, uh, I know this is pretty short, but honestly, this deck doesn't really 
it's not that complicated to play against. So, you know, <laughs> it's honestly whatever. There's a lot of really good counter options to this. So that's, it's pretty much what makes it like one of the more fair decks. Because even though it's still really consistent in what it's able to do, it's also really easy to like break their boards and just straight up win the game. And with that, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!